In this video, we're using the Arco grinder to brew espresso. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're taking another look at the Arco grinder that we tried a few weeks back. Um, I'm sure you can look into that video as well. Uh, in that video, we made a little bit of an introduction and we also discussed a little bit of filter brewing with it, right? So in this video, we're just gonna talk a little bit about espresso. We're gonna keep it short on point and answer some of the questions that we kind of got after we did the first initial video, right? With that, we're also gonna just include a few tips and tricks on just espresso preparation in general, right? Now, one of the things we did mention uh, last time around was that when you use this grinder, you have to be a bit careful because grinding in the machine like we're doing now versus grinding manually, which you also can, uh, is gonna give you two quite different grinding results on the same grind setting, right? So you can't actually convert a manual grind size to an automated grind size like we have here, right? So just keep that in mind. Now we're using the kind of automated version for espresso just because it's a lot faster and smoother. It takes a lot of time to grind for espresso on a manual grinder. Uh, the coffee that we're using today is a red honey processed Ethiopian varietal from the Pico Kaya farm in Ecuador. Uh, very sweet coffee, very well balanced, beautiful kind of fruit notes, which works really well for espresso. Um, and for the sake of this video, we've actually stepped away from our normal kind of pressure profiling concept of brewing, because we realize that a lot of you people at home don't have that opportunity. If you do have that opportunity, you're more than welcome to just comment below and we can give you some pressure profile ideas as well. However, what we've done here is brew with a fixed nine bar pressure. Um, so that's kind of just all the basics of the preparation. Now, we've been spending a bit of time, maybe the last 20, 30 minutes, actually dialing in espresso on this grinder. I probably pulled 10, 11 shots. Worked fine. Uh, there was a discussion after the previous video about overheating uh, in their own manual. They write that it shouldn't be used for more than 30 minutes continuously. Obviously, when you dial in an espresso, you turn it on and off in between. And we haven't found any issues with it. Uh, it seems to be fine. It hasn't overheated. Uh, it doesn't smell weird. It seems to come out pretty okay, right? Um, so we're kind of happy with that. It's actually quite easy to work with. Now, one of the things we do have to think about when we use the grinder is one, it's gonna be a little bit noisy. Two, it's not gonna be super quick. Uh, but I'm gonna grind out the coffee now and then we're kinda gonna talk more about that later. So I'm grinding 20.2 grams of coffee here. Putting the grinder on before I'm starting to use it. And then we're done. Uh, it's fair to say that grinding 20 grams of coffee takes a little bit, let's say between 20 and 25 seconds. This is also on a grind size of 16 um, on the first kind of level, uh, which I guess is roughly within the recommendations as well. Uh, now, one of the things to consider here, and we kind of really like is that you take it out really easily because of the magnetic. Uh, you have to make sure to really kind of look at the coffee it becomes quite static. So you wanna make sure that a lot of the coffee actually comes into your final dose. Uh, however, it's super smooth to just put that in your standard porta filter, right? Just take it down, tap it a little bit, again, to make sure that we have all of that coffee coming down. I'm always kind of double checking in here because I've seen sometimes you actually get quite a lot of coffee stuck. So just make sure you do that before you actually dose. And then when we measured here, uh, we're 19.9 to 20, right? So we lost maybe 0.1, 0.2-ish grind, which is perfectly fine. There's no such thing as a grinder with zero retention. It's impossible to have, right? So that conversation is, is quite unnecessary to have. Most grinders would waste around this amount, and I think that's very kind of accurate and fine, right? Now, one of the things to, to consider is how then the coffee comes into the porta filter due to how that little kind of dose thing actually looks like. You have to definitely do some puck work to make sure that this is properly prepared. So we're just gonna make sure to distribute that evenly first. 
then I'm going to use our own distribution tool. Keep in mind with distribution tools, uh, two things. One, you want to avoid pre-tapping. So before you use this tool, you want to make sure that all of the coffee is actually beneath the rim. This is before you even start using it. Otherwise, you're going to pre-tamp the coffee, uh, basically put pressure at it, and then the second tap is not going to be as interesting. Um, secondly, you're only moving the top part of the coffee, not the bottom, right? I think we all know this. There is a tool that we're going to get very soon that's going to allow us to kind of distribute the whole park, but more about that in the second video. Uh, so we distributed it, tamping it. Now, tamp pressure is something that is maybe the most overlooked variable in espresso preparation. It's incredibly important, makes a massive difference. And we actually have a little tool, Happy Tamper. Uh, we haven't started using this properly yet. Uh, it's just something that I stumbled upon and I think it's quite interesting. It basically allows you to set different, let's call them tamp pressures. Um, and I think that's gonna be something that is really interesting to work with. One of the things we've seen for those that wanna be really serious about tamping is to use some kind of larger scale and actually basically tamp on that, right? Uh, you can use like this classic uh, bathroom scales or whatever, right? Um, it's something that we see a lot in competition these days. Um, but again, it's something that's gonna have a very, very big impact on your espresso. So we're dosing this 20 grams, uh, brewing it on nine bar pressure, and we're basically just gonna go for it. So we're brewing this at basically 54 grams out. Um, we're pulling that in around 25 to 27 seconds, uh, which we feel works pretty well on this kind of fixed bar pressure. One thing that we do have continuously challenging with, with brewing espresso with this, and we, we have to come back and figure this out, and I'm not sure exactly why we have this, but we've been obviously brewing quite a lot of espresso on this setup. Uh, I've been brewing a lot of espresso on the nine bar uh, menu as well, kind of because of the, the competition coming up in September, right? And we've been using various different grinders to kind of figure out what works and doesn't work. What we can say with this grinder is that we're actually getting quite a lot of channeling uh, on much more frequently than ever before uh, with the very detailed kind of park preparation, right? So even this shot here has a slight kind of indication of channeling as well, even though it's not too bad in this case. Uh, but it's a little bit interesting because it's when we move in between grinders, the second we kind of come back to this grinder, we actually get more channeling, which is a little bit interesting, right? Maybe the manufacturer has some kind of idea on this. Um, we're going to definitely investigate and see if we can figure this out a little bit more in detail as well, right? Um, but overall, it's an interesting grinder to actually use for espresso. The workflow is super easy. It's a little bit noisy. Again, it takes a little bit of time to grind out the coffee, uh, but that's kind of the case with any smaller grinder, so you can't really fault it on that. In terms of taste, what we're getting out is actually quite tasty espresso, right? It's perfectly fine. Um, there's a little bit of a, a dryness and a, and a flavor that is definitely not there when we're using other more professional grinders, but you can also not compare this with, let's say, the latest Mythos the ditting behind me, uh, the latest Mark Kerning, like they're different grinders, right? Um, you don't pay nearly the same price for this machine as you would do for any of those grinders. So it's unfair to kind of compare them. Um, but overall, I see no reason why you can't brew a perfectly fine espresso with this. It's really easy to adjust the grind settings. Um, again, the workflow is, is actually quite nice, um, even though it's a little bit noisy. So overall, we're quite happy with it. Um, and we'd be super curious to hear what you guys are doing with it. I assume some of you have it now um, and wondering kind of, are you brewing espresso with it? What's your kind of recipes? What do you think works and doesn't work? Are you experiencing the same kind of amount of challenges with challenging as we do? Um, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, we're definitely gonna revisit this, come back with it and see if we can figure that out and see if we can really get those 
kind of perfect shots coming as well because I'm sure they're in there somewhere. We just have to kind of know where to look. Um, as per usual, we're going to take this conversation over to Patreon. I also write a little bit more than usual on Patreon about competition stuff because I'm in preparation. So for those of you that want to kind of know more about Espresso, that's a great place to start. Um, and with that, as always, we wanted to say thank you for watching and have a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.